Hi everyone, this is Dr. Praveen S. Patil here. Today we are going to talk on abscess. So what is abscess? It's a localized collection. So here, so I have drawn a, a photo, a picture of the arm here. So this is a swelling. So this is nothing but a localized, not the generalized. So it's a localized collection of the pus. Okay. And in a cavity, which is lined by the granulation tissue and covered by the pyogenic membrane. So what is the granulation tissue? What is pyogenic membrane? We'll discuss later. And this is the definition of the abscess. What is that? Localized collection of the pus in a cavity lined by granulation tissue and covered by the pyogenic membrane. So when we consider the abscess, abscess, there are four kinds of abscess. One is pyogenic. Pyo refers to pus pyemic abscess, pyogenic abscess, pyemic abscess, metastatic abscess, cold abscess. Pyogenic abscess means wherever there is an infection to this area. So there will be a localized correction of the pus will be there that is called as pyogenic abscess. Pyemic abscess means the infection will be in the bloodstream somewhere else in the body or the in the whole body. But whenever through the circulation that uh, infective emboli come and get shelter in somewhere in any other part of the body so that is called as pyemic abscess metastatic abscess means the abscess will be somewhere and it will spread into adjacent structure and there will be a collection so if here there is the injury the infection may come and get shelter here and there will be a collection of the pus so these kind of abscesses are called metastatic abscess and another comes that is cold abscess cold so all the abscess have the symptoms of inflammation that is color rubber dolor tumor so these are the cardinal features of the inflammation so these inflammatory changes will be there in the all three abscesses that is it is pyogenic abscess pyemic abscess and metastatic abscess but these features usually absent in case of cold abscess so that is tubercular abscesses and all so tubercular abscess are the example for the cold abscess so whenever there is inflammation so the vascularity will increase to that area and the permeability of the tissues also will increase permeability of the cells also in increases so the exudate comes out so it comes in the form of exudate which is rich in proteins so when we look into the cavity of the abscess it looks almost like this so the outermost layer as i told the exudate which comes from the cell which is rich in protein and fibrin that fibrin get protein exudate causes fibrin deposition which forms into a pyogenic membrane so this layer the outermost layer is nothing but the fibrin membrane that is fibrin deposition this is called as pyogenic membrane pyogenic membrane the in next layer this is a granulation tissue which appeared on the pyogenic membrane so this is a granulation tissue and this is nothing but loculi so these are loculi so the content which is there inside the loculi is nothing but the pus hope you understood the thing so because of the inflammation protein comes out from the cell and fibrin also comes out and fibrin form the pyogenic membrane and the granulation tissue will develop and these are the loculi loculi which is having the dense pus within it so whenever you open the abscess so you have to break these loculi either with the sinus forceps or with the introducing by the finger the advantage of 
introducing the finger e rather than the instrument is you can assess what is the depth of the cavity and how the cavity it is and you can feel it the instrument can't feel the softer tissue or firmer tissue so that we can feel by the finger so we have introduced the finger we have to introduce the finger and breath this locally so then only the cav entire cavity will become clean so lysosomal enzymes released by the macrophages and uh, polymorph causes liquefaction of the adjacent tissue and that will cause the accumulation then how the infection spread as i told while explaining the pyogenic and pyemic abscess so it can spread by the direct infection so the infection may directly enter into this part where the abscess appear so that is called as direct spread hematogenous spread hematogenous spread usually appears in pyemic in uh, abscesses so through the blood the blood is got infected there is a emboli infective emboli and wherever you get take shelter so there will be appearance of the abscess so that is hematogenous spread third one is lymphatic spread so if there is a direct infection here and that infection may ascend along with the lymphatic channel and it may take shelter somewhere else so that is through the lymphatics and the extension from the adjacent tissue tissue so if there is a injury and infection may go there adjacent tissue so and take the shelter here so these are the infection spreading modes then what are the organisms which are causing the infection so one is staphylococcus aureus which is commonly seen and streptococcus pyogenesis and gram negative organisms like e coli pseudomonas klebsiella and sometimes you know anaerobes bacteria also cause the abscess formation so what are the clinical features we get fever with or without chills and rigors we may get and localized swelling which is fluctuant so fluctuant means whenever you touch whenever there is a fluid whenever you put a pressure on another side this the fluid which is present inside it may fluctuate and to another side that is called a fluctuation test positive so this fluctuation will be there in the most of the abscess localized swelling which is fluctuant and point of pus will be there so at the prominent part we may see see a prominent pus point throbbing pain will be there brownie induration around and uh, inflammatory signs like rubor that is redness dolor that is pain calor that is warmness and tumor that is swelling and functionlessness so loss of the function will be there these are the cardinal features of the abscess investigations for the pyogenic abscess the routine investigations are sufficient and treatment is hilton's method of draining so wherever you want to drain so that has to be prepared with the antiseptic solutions and draping and afterwards we have to aspirate it so aspirate the content just to see what is the content in it and it is also helps to assess the depth at what depth the pus it is collected and afterwards along the line of neurovascular bundle we have to take the incision so afterwards we have to introduce the forceps sinus forceps to break the pyogenic membrane of the abscess as soon as you open the pyogenic membrane so with this adequate incision so pus starts coming out and either with the instrument or with the finger so you have to break the loculi which are present inside and wash with the normal saline or antiseptic solution and keep the pack and put the dressing so the incision is called as this is method is called as hilton's method if this this is the abscess and when you take the incision and this tissue is non viable or already got infected then you have to make a cruciate incision and after adequate drainage then you have to cut this tissue
so afterwards it becomes an incision like this so this is called as cruciate method of removing when the tissue is very unhealthy then we can go for this method so in the description i'll give the link of the both the method used for the abscess so if you want to see you can go through that link so one is at the nape of the neck i used this method that is cruciate incision i have put who is a newly diagnosed diabetic patient and another method that is hilton method i have shown on the thigh abscess so even that uh, link also is there in the description so friends this is all about the abscess if you find this is a worth value seeing or spending a time in my channel then kindly subscribe to the channel press the bell icon and forward to the needed people thank you thanks for watching my video so if you would like to follow me on the instagram facebook and uh, twitter then uh, the link is there in the description thank you thanks for one and all